And uh, many uh, liberals have expressed disappointment in the president. And we were just wondering, what do you think about that? Do you think um, President Obama could have done any better on certain uh, high-profile issues like health care from a progressive point of view? Uh, probably not. But, but to expect him to have done better would have been a mistake. Because if you read his record before he became president of the United States, you could see that he was a uh, friend of the banks, uh, uh, protector of the status quo, a person that, that could um, very eloquent, wonderful rhetoric. And his, his heart was in the right place, but his hands were tied. And he was that kind of a politician. So that even the little that he's managed to get and then, of course, it's the people uh, that uh, no president can uh, do, do anything by himself. I mean, he needs to have people around him that share a passion and willing to take risks. And those were not the kind of people that um, Obama appointed to the, the Treasury. or you know, That was not Larry Summers and Geithner and so forth. And it's certainly it's not uh, daily the new chief of staff, who, as you know, is a, a uh, former lobbyist from J.P. Morgan Chase and uh, was a chief lobbyist or advisor to the telecom industry. So I, I – Obama was, was – I, again, the, uh, had – it was a near thing that he – I mean, he, for him even to get elected president took, took a lot of uh, other things that had to happen. One of the, the Republicans had to nominate McCain and Sarah Palin, and the um, country had to be in bad economic shape and so forth. So, mm -hmm. I, but I mean, he's. I, I think he's. I think he means well. Uh, I, I think he uh, believes what he says. I don't think he's. A, a cynic. Uh, I think he's ineffective if you were hoping for some sort of transformation. Mm -hmm. But that would have been, I think, a fond and misplaced expectation. Well, do you think he could have been more effective if he had been a different type of communicator or a different type of politician? Or is it just that he's coming up against an entrenched system? Well, he's, he's, he's coming up against an entrenched system, and he would uh, had to be a different kind of person. I mean, his his his, his temperament is, is one who to conciliate, compromise, um, try to get move the ball, you know, even a few feet if possible. Right. <laughs> okay. But I mean, he, he he understands that the government is in the hands of an oligarchy and. Uh, He's not about to uh, change that system. Okay. I want to ask you about our local politician here, Nancy Pelosi, a former Speaker of the House, who obviously lost her position. And um, she took a lot of guff, and um, she sort of became the centerpiece of the Republicans' campaign, uh, their national campaign, uh, during the last election. And I was wondering if you felt, um, is she to blame at all? Um, for sort of the national collapse of the Democrats? No, I don't think so. I, again, I think that the, she's the subject of, of a very um, intensely directed Republican propaganda. I mean, they tried to make Nancy Pelosi into some sort of witch of the West. <laughs> but again, that's the politics of, of personality, and it's a switch and bait thing. It's a substitution of... Uh, personality for the underlying um, uh, set of circumstances. And so uh, I, I don't think it's fair to single out Nancy for, for blame. Okay. Um, and last question. Can you give us uh, anything you see in terms of a positive trend in terms of both the Democrats and the Republicans and also negatives in terms well, of the Democrats I, and the Republicans? You know, I, I, I think that the, 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 uh, what you saw in Wisconsin is a positive can be seen as a positive. I think at least we're getting, bringing that argument into um, into the foreground, and I think there will be more of that as
this, uh, the pressure of unpaid debts and insufficient revenue uh, falls more heavily on the, a lot of states, including California, and then not only on the states but on the counties and on the cities. I mean, they're going to be uh, – you'll see more layoffs. You'll see um, higher demands for, for taxes. And so maybe we will have a, a open, uh, passionate uh, argument about uh, the nature of the American social contract. And we, we haven't had that kind of an argument really out loud in this country since the 1960s. And do you see pension reform as um, a valid issue, uh, as sort of I framed think, by Republicans? I, I, I think it's inevitable. I mean, given given the, uh, you know, I'm not an economist, but I just don't think there's, a, there's enough money to meet all the obligations. But that's as much the fault of the politicians as it is of the the, the unions. So, I mean, they they enable each other. You know, the politicians would promise to pay because they didn't have didn't come out of the current account and they could put it down. The road and uh, and get get votes returned for something they didn't have to pay, but left the debt to be paid by somebody else, namely you and I, or our children and heirs.